federal government officially announced the annexation of Korea on August 29, 1910, but the actual signature was carried out on August 22nd. Japan had continuous growth and power and influence over Korea as the days went on. The South Koreans were becoming oppressed. For over 500 years, Korea was ruled over by Joseon Dynasty. During this time, people followed the teachings of Confucius, which valued respect, loyalty, and tradition. The king ruled with the help of scholars and authorities who believed in a strict social order. People's roles were defined. Everyone knew their place, providing stability in Korea. Korea was often called the Hermit Kingdom because Korea kept itself isolated from the outside world. Korea wanted to protect its people, culture, and independence, and as a result, it avoided interacting with foreign countries. Only a few interactions were made with close neighbors like China, who were seen as allies, but in the late 1800s, it became harder to stay isolated. By the 19th century, foreign powers started to pressure Korea into opening up. The United States, the European nations, and Japan all wanted to trade with Korea. In particular, Japan had grown stronger and modernized quickly, and they saw Korea as a strategic land to control. This led to the Treaty of Kangwa, which forced Korea to open its ports and favor Japan in trade, which made it harder for Korea to remain independent. Japan wasn't the only country that was interested in Korea. China, who was also an ally, wanted to keep its influence, and Russia saw Korea as a path to expand its own empire. But in 1894, Japan defeated China in a war, forcing China to leave Korea alone. And in 1905, Japan defeated Russia in another war, the Russo-Japanese War, proving that it was now the most powerful force in East Asia, leaving Korea alone. Some leaders in Korea realized that the country needed to change in order to survive. They introduced reforms, such as allowing people of all classes to have more rights in addition to modernizing the government. But not everyone was approval of this change. In 1894, angered peasants rose up in the Tonga Peasant Rebellion, fighting against foreign influence and calling for equality. The, the need for reform was clear, but the path was not easy. In 1905, Japan forced Korea to become a protectorate, which meant that its international affairs were controlled by Japan. This treaty, signed without the true consent of the king, was a severe blow to Korean independence. King Kojong, the ruler of Korea, could only watch as more and more power was taken from, by Japan. As Japan took more control, a new sense of nationalism began to grow in Korea. Scholars, activists, and even young students began calling out, calling for independence and a stronger Korea. Groups like the Independence Club spread the message of self-reliance and unity, and Koreans living abroad also supported the cause, sending ideas and resources back home to inspire the people. In January 1918, President Woodrow Wilson's speech promoting self-determination resonated with many nations, including Korea, which was under Japanese control. His declaration, which had people choose their own government, gave many Koreans hope that they too could demand for independence. His vision inspired many Korean leaders, both at home and in exile, to begin, begin peaceful protests with the March First Movement emerging as a call for justice and autonomy. By the end of World War I, frustration with Japan's exploitation of Korea grew, but the end of the war also meant for a hope and new ideas for Koreans, for Koreans' power to grow. Back in Korea, in a desperate attempt to save the country, King Kojo, a strong and fearless advocate for Korean independence, continued to support Korean activists and dreamt of a free Korea, even after Japan took control of the country. He secretly sent envoys to the International Peace Conference in 1907, hoping to gain foreign support. But Japan retaliated by forcing him to step down, placing his son on the throne. By 1910, Japan fully annexed Korea, making it a Japanese colony. The Chosun Dynasty was gone, and Korea was left under Japanese rule, sparking a deep desire for freedom in the hearts of its people. Unfortunately, on January 21, 1919, 
the king suddenly passed away. Officially, he died from a stroke, but many Koreans believed he had been poisoned by the Japanese to silence his influence. On the day of the funeral procession, thousands of Koreans filled the streets, chanting for independence. But Japanese authorities quickly moved in, cracking down on the murderers with brutal force. The Japanese response only fueled the people's anger and their determination to fight. King Gojong's death and the violent suppression of his funeral awakened a new wave of nationalism across Korea. From that moment, Koreans were more determined than ever to stand together and work towards their independence. This was the beginning of a movement that could not be stopped. The Korean people were oppressed by the Japanese in multiple inhumane ways. Schools and universities forbade speaking Korean and emphasized manual labor and non ceasing to to the emperor. Native trees were chopped down and replaced with Japanese trees, getting rid of the national park. All public speeches and assemblies were prohibited in Korea, and people were routinely interrogated whenever more than two individuals gathered together. Strong military occupation and stringent press control were exercised by Imperial Japan, resulting in Korea being annexed without its people being able to put up much of a fight. Young Korean women and girls were forced into sexual slavery, known as comfort women. They were kidnapped, forced, and bought by military brothels by Japan against their own will. Koreans had no choice but to choose Japanese-style names, or else they would have been classified as non-existent. Korea experienced cultural genocide when the Japanese government forced the Koreans to worship their gods, past emperors, and even past heroes who had helped Japan conquer Korea. The Japanese attempted to completely wipe out Korea and its history. Both in the past and present, countless nations have constantly fought for their freedom. Korea was no exception. Although the imperial Japanese rule of Korea gave many Koreans a reason to give into oppression, many decided it was time to take the initiative to free the country. Among these individuals is a student who refused to be confined by physical and ideological frontiers. This is the story of Yu Lung Sun, whose cries for liberty broke Japan's barriers of oppression. Yuan Sun died at 17 as a martyr in prison and became a national hero. Today, the prison that she was held in stands in remembrance of her courage and dedication, as well as the Korean struggle for independence. Although this movement did not give Korea their independence, it was an immense leap for them. The movement gave them a chance to proudly assert their culture and country to the whole world. This was their announcement that Korea was alive and that they were fighting back for their lives to get their independence. <laughs>